Pastor Sam Nigel Souza joining me as always is Mangla Malu. And today, the headline index is under some pressure on this Monday morning. The problem is the mid and the small cap indices because out there, the losses are far deeper. So keep an eye out on them. Uh, you know, the mid cap index as we speak is down close to 1.2%. But let's get straight to a couple of managements that we have lined up. Let's do that, Nigel. You know, even as we're seeing some bit of uh, decline in the broader markets, let's talk about uh, Phenolex Industries. That's the one stock which showed a bit of a decline in, uh, uh, you know, is at the low point of trade with a cut of almost 7 odd percent. This, after the company's second quarter earnings, uh, saw revenue lower by 6 percent, while we also saw the company's profitability hit by inventory losses. We do have Ajit Venkatraman, the managing director of the company, joining us now to discuss the earnings in detail. Ajit, thank you for joining in. Um, you know, things weren't as good as expected in the, first, uh, in the second quarter, the first half of this year. Just wanted your thoughts on what is one to expect in the next couple of quarters on the revenue, volume and margin front? Good morning and uh, greetings for the festive season to all of you. Good morning. Uh, in terms of and greetings uh, to you too. revenues, yes, we did uh, go good. Uh, so in terms of uh, revenues, we did, did go down by about 6% uh, 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 compared to Q2 of last year. But uh, this is mainly driven by uh, the drop in uh, resin volumes, uh, which was uh, significantly impacted by uh, uh, one of our key suppliers in the Middle East uh, shutting down their operations. But in terms of margins, there has been a significant turnaround uh, from a overall loss of about 143 crores last year. Uh, we have moved to about 103 crores of profits. Mm. All right. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. You know, your pipe volumes, they were up by closer to around 6%. I think the street was uh, hoping for numbers in double digits. Uh, how do you see volume strength from here? Point number one. And on the realizations front, you know, I'm looking at pipe and fittings. The realization actually is up on a sequential basis. Is it because of product mix, which is good, but then the EBITDA per kg is still down? T tell us about both these two aspects. So we had a good move uh, in terms of moving from agri to non-agri. The, the ratio has improved significantly. And uh, in terms of margins as well, the Q2 is typically the, low, uh, low, uh, the lowest uh, in terms of uh, volumes for us. So this is quite acceptable. Uh, uh, we did have a, a lower than expected because of us skew towards uh, agri compared to other uh, players in the market. Okay, and what about realizations? They were better on a per unit basis. Yes. It's because of better mix, is it? That's correct. We have seen an uh, improvement in the margins uh, due to the better mix of products. So what would your full year guidance on margins be? I mean, I was just looking at the last three years. At peak, they were closer to 30%. Last fiscal, it was closer to 7 odd percent. This year, what is the kind of margin that you're likely to end with? See, it all depends upon uh, uh, the PVC prices. Uh, till June uh, and July, uh, the year was going pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, after that, uh, we have seen uh, uh, significant volatility in uh, the PVC prices. And, and they have hit, uh, uh, I believe, the low point of $750 per metric ton just about a week back. Uh, the network did uh, slow down on intakes because of dropping PVC prices. If the prices stabilize, then we expect that the uh, the growth will continue towards uh, uh, towards end of the year. What about margins, Vatsa? Do you think margins go back to double digits, mid teens? What can it be? Uh, you know that that's been the most disappointing aspect. Give and take everything, and assuming that prices don't move too much from here. Uh, how do you see it shape up for the second half of the year? Oopsie. I think uh, we have... Yeah, I think he's back with us. Yes, sir. Yeah, Go ahead. You were you were giving us some numbers on margins. We, I think we, we a... missed you. Yeah. Go ahead. Now we can hear you. You're back with us. No, no. Uh, what I was trying to say was it all depends upon the PVC prices. If the prices remain stable, then we expect... Uh, the rest of the year to be fairly uh, fairly decent. Uh, in okay. terms of margins, we uh, we expect it to be around the same levels. 
All right. So that's about the operational environment and that's about the way you are looking at growing your business, etc. as well. But Mr. Enkar Raman, you know, one of the things that was plaguing, uh, uh, you know, the, the uncertainty that uh, the people were looking at was with regards to the promoter group. Uh, now with, uh, you know, Mr. Deepak being out and uh, Mr. Prakash having uh, the entire uh, or being the largest shareholder of both Finolex Industries and Finolex Cables, I just wanted to know whether the thought of Merging these companies has come about. Would there be any synergies? How do things stand now? See, uh, to be very honest, uh, as a management, we don't get involved with uh, the promoter uh, level, issue, uh, level issues. Uh, we are fairly focused on the business and uh, therefore will not be able to make much comments on the uh, promoter level activities. Okay, all right. Uh... Okay, then you won't be able to comment on that. What about the working capital days? What's the broadband we should be working with for the year? Uh, see, uh, we did have an increase in working capital, mainly mm. driven by higher inventory levels, uh, mm. especially for the last one and a half months. This was mainly due to the uh, dropping PDC prices and the network was not taking in raw material, uh, not taking in material because of dropping prices. With prices stabilizing, we expect this to uh, reduce going forward. To what level? Uh, can give us that working capital uh, broadband number and also the PVC EDC spread. You know, that's been all over the place. I think for the past quarter, it was somewhere in the vicinity of $550 to $600. What is it likely to be? So working capital days and the spread. So working capital, about 59, 55 to 59 days is what we were looking at. And for the PVC EDC spread, it is at around $450 at the moment. For us, the comfort level is about $550. PVC BCM spread is at $95, which is fairly low. Mm. Our comfort level is as upwards of $250. All right. So that means that's, uh, all right. We will hope that comes up and, you know, reflects in your operating performance going forward as well. But finally, you know, I, I do uh, get your point that, you know, what promoters do is nothing to do with the management. And that's uh, obviously not in your scope of operations. But just as the managing director of Finolix Industries, I wanted your thoughts. Uh, your strategy team definitely would have worked on some sort of synergies, if at all, both the companies were merged, right? In terms of operational costs or expanding your geographies, your markets. Just wanted to understand your thoughts, whether you as, as the MD have paid some heed to this. This too early days and uh, we will see as it evolves. But you definitely have given some thought to it, right? Uh, see, as I mentioned to you, we operate fairly independently and we don't get involved with the, uh, with the promoter level activities. All right, we take that point, but we will definitely monitor this space as well while hoping for operational performance and volumes to improve. Thanks a lot, Mr. Venkat Raman, for joining in. This has been a pleasure. Wish you and your team season's festivities too. We take a short break on this note, and on the other side, we get chatting with the management of RPL Bank.